What in the heck GPU is that? So yes, this is an NVIDIA CMP100-210 or HX. Some people say the HX, some people don't. Either which way, this is the card we're playing with today. And you can see right behind me, the tech power up. This is based off of Volta architecture with HBM2 memory, 16 gigs of it to be precise, uh, with a 4,096 bit bus bandwidth on the memory itself, 5,120 cores, we don't care about ROPS really. I don't think that really matters for mining. If we scroll down a little bit here, we will see, yes, it is Volta architecture, 12 nanometer. Now, it being 12 nanometer and being uh, definitely more than a few years old, you would think it will pull a lot of power. But surprisingly, you'll see, once we get to testing on this, it's actually pretty efficient. I'm surprised at what it does. Also, when we go to overclocking this, there really isn't that much you really need to do for overclocking. It's actually... As the pirate will put it, it's one of the most boring NVIDIA cards to overclock. You just basically, there's a few settings that you might tweak a little bit, and that's it. It's even easier than a regular 3070. So let's go ahead, stall it on the bench. On the back of this card is actually an EPS 12 volt, because this is meant to be a server style. Uh, they break it out to the two, going the wrong way, two 8 pin PCIe. So that's what we're going to plug in right now. Now, this is also a passively cold card, so I need to jerry-rig something. Never thought I'd actually use this, but it's actually a 12-volt blower. Uh, I don't know what size it is, but it's literally just a 2-pin 12-volt. So we're going to mash this into one of the 4-pin fan controllers that's on the bench lab itself here and push air through it. Now, it's only going to cover about half of the fin stack and blow straight through, so... Cooling could be better once you get into better cooling solution, but this should work just for testing. There we go. It's off. And you can see it shows up as a Tesla V100 PCIe 12 gigabyte, but if you keep reading it, it's actually 16 gigs of HBM2 memory. So let's see here. The first thing we're going to test is flux. This is reading the power from each of our PCIe A pins and also from the ribbon cable itself. So total GPU power at the moment is 113 watts. Jump back over, 131 watts. And we even look on here, see it says 136 watts. For some reason, these NVIDIA cards actually over-report their wattage. So right now the clocks that we're running, core offset is 300, lock core clock, 1110 memory clock the only thing you can do is an offset for the memory you can't do anything else with that and that's all we can do so i think these were about the right numbers you get for most algorithms Shoot back over here you see we're getting about 81 and a half souls to sold the watt of 0.612 i'm not sure if that's good or not i really haven't mined flux in quite some time but again, if we switch back over to our GPU power, we're actually only pulling 113 watts. So take that measurement, and you also got to take away, what, 20 watts? Because Mini-Z is going to go by what was actually being reported. Mini-Z is going to go by what's reported from GPU itself. And it thinks it's doing 134 watts. It's actually only doing 111 now, Siri, we're mining at that. What's the temperature getting to? 57 core, 60 on the memory. That's it. And that's on a crappy blower motor that's just like shoved off into the corner to try to get some air into it. That's not going to do anything. Here we go. That'll work. Now you can see. Yeah, 57 for the core, 61. It'll probably creep up a few more degrees if we let this run for a while. Okay, so let's figure out how good that is right now. Uh, on hashrate.no for flux. We're doing 82 souls at, one more check, should be what? 114 watts. Minor fee, full fee, calculate. Full fee profit, 18 cents a day. 0.277 flux profit. Let's compare that to a 3070 though. It doesn't matter if you run low, medium, or high on it. You're only talking five to six cents profit. 
uh, a few more souls, definitely a lot, a few more souls. We were getting 82, they're getting 72 on high. That's at 149 watts. So this is definitely more efficient on flux. Just for the heck of it, let's do ETC because it's technically rated for uh, CMP 100. It has to do 100 mega hash roughly on ET hash. That's where the original numbering came from. Okay, so we can see we are getting 104.7 mega hash on ETC. Uh, let's switch back over. The temperature is definitely more. The power is definitely more. If we're getting pretty hot. That car can't, or that blower can't keep up with it quite as much. So 104.7. It's saying 164 watts. Let's see what the bench lab actually says. It's truly using 143 watts. So not bad at all. Let's plug those numbers in and see what we can get. 104 mega hash at 144 watts. Oh, it's not profitable. But then again, I don't think anything's profitable on ETC right now. Let's take that. So we're doing negative 16 profit per day with this card. Let's compare it to a 3070. About the same profit loss. 17 cents, but that's only doing 62 mega hash at 118 watts, roughly. So, for the amount of extra hash rate you get on it, it's about even with a 3070. Okay, let's go for broke and try Kapow. Okay, I had to let the card cool down first because Kapow is really going to push it and it's going to overheat and thermal throttle really quick. This card thermal throttles when the memory hits 85C. So, let's start the miner and get our numbers before it starts overheating. There's 57 mega hash. It's the power still ramping up here. And you can see the temperature is jumping fast. 57.2 at 231 watts. We're actually pulling 204 watts. 204 watts out of this car. So 204 at 57.2. Stop the monitor before it starts overheating. 57.2 mega hash. 200 watts? I think it was. 15 cent profit a day with this miner right now. Let's double check with the 3070. Okay, so the 3070 actually gets a profit of negative one penny, whereas this one's making 15 cents. It's going to be a pain to cool, so you definitely need a very good cooling solution or it's going to thermal throttle really fast. Uh, but that's at 150 watts and only 30.59 mega hash. We got 57.2 out of that unit. Auto Lycos 2, aka Ergo, plus another coin possibly soon. So let's go ahead, let's send that. And remember, Auto Lycos 2 bounces back and forth as it's making up the next block of free information. So we're going to take the peak number, not as it fluctuates up and down, because that's normal for Auto Lycos 2. Uh, and we're doing about 202 mega hash. It's saying 126 watts. Bench Lab says 105 watts. That now I can run it on that blower all day at that at that voltage or that wattage. Whoops, wrong one. It's actually making five cents on Ergo per day compared to 3070. Once again, 3070 is in the red by two cents. Doesn't matter which overclock you're using. Uh, 120 watts, 116 watts. This is actually using less wattage. And getting more mega hash on the high they're saying 173 and a half mega hash this gets 202 at less wattage this thing's perfect at ergo zealous hash version 2 the new one that just came out so let's go ahead and send that one and this card on v2 literally just tops out at 32 kilo hash that's where it's happy it says power 109 watts let's see what it's actually doing 92 watts on Zell's hash for V2. 32 kilo hash. Let's see if they updated hash rate.no for the 3070. I don't know. 19 cents profit or 0.0168 Zellus a day. Okay, so let's compare that to the 37. Number two on the list. Profit 10. So that's also in profit. We're making a few more cents on the CMP 100. That's getting on high 28 kilo hash at 111 watts so this is more efficient on zealots than a 37. and just so you know i haven't changed these clocks at all these clocks seem to be perfect regardless of what algorithm you're running you can tweak them a little bit 
uh, the pirate and I played with it a little bit, and even Rondi and I played with it, and actually Brian Hollywood played with it as well. We these numbers seem to work perfectly for these cards. Otherwise, you kind of get an avalanche effect, and it just falls off. Either it pulls too much power, way too much power if you go much higher, or it hits an avalanche or a shelf, whatever. God, I'm having terrible synonyms here. Um, and the hatchery just plummets. Okay, so let's try Dynex now using one zero. Mark. There we go on Dynex. Nine point two five kilohashes. The efficiency says seventy two seventy one. Remember that this thing's over reporting power. It's more like seventy six seventy seven because it's saying one hundred twenty nine watts of software. Let's see bench lab. One hundred and four watts. That's it. We are making. 15 cents a day and a profit of 0.314 Dynex on this one card. So let's compare that to the 3070 as well. Uh, apparently the 3070 is not profitable right now. On Dynex, negative 3 cents. Only 45.61 hash to watt ratio. We're getting about 76. Way more efficient. Uh, hash rate's also more than double. Yeah, that's well, 5 uh, Almost, oh, that's 4.5, so not double the hash rate. So what can I say about this card other than it either meets or exceeds a 3070 in hash rate and efficiency? And you can get these on eBay right now for $175 used while supplies last. Because, like I said, these were not very popular or mass-produced cards uh, during the CMP line. But yeah, I'm going to be building a rig of these, uh, a 12-card rig, and show you how to custom pull these and where to get that rig from in the next week or two. Me and Yeti are going halves on it. He's going to buy six cards. I'm going to get six cards. And we'll split the um, profits from that. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.